All right, Move Better Project, Run Better Project, episode three. Today we're gonna to talk about foot contact. Um, to review what I talked about in the first video, the intro, the three things that make up good running are good posture, efficiency, and then building resilience rather than uh, creating injuries. So this episode and the next one are really gonna be about efficiency. Um, so the first thing in kind of one of the biggest discussions when it comes to running is how should your foot contact the ground? How should your body basically transmit energy from the ground? How do you move yourself forward? What's the best way to do that in terms of contacting your foot? So I'm going to back up a little bit so that you can see my feet. And the big sort of debate slash what people talk about a lot with this is should you land on the forefoot? Should you land with the ball of your foot on the ground first? like this kind of thing, or should you land on your heel? And what we see is with, I'm wearing very minimal shoes right now, so I don't have a ton of cushion. So if I tried to go for a run on concrete and I was going out and landing on my heel, it would be pretty painful. I need the natural cushion and springiness that my body has um, when I land on the ball of my foot. That allows my the joints within my foot, the ankle joint and the knee joint and hip, all to be springs. And that's a good thing. Being springy means being efficient. Because if I land on my heel, when I take a big step and I land on my heel, then to propel myself forward, I have to use what I would call muscle action and drive off onto the next step. So if I'm landing on my heel, that, A, I'm totally stiff. My knee is straight, right? My hip isn't, you know, creating a lot of, uh, isn't able to efficiently absorb a lot of, of shock there. So this is a very stiff position. If, if my heel's in front of me, it's actually slowing me down. There's a vector of that force that points backward. So I really wanna land on the ball of the foot underneath my body. That would allow me to, boom, be in this position where my ankle can cushion some of that, my knee can cushion some of that. And not only can those joints, the muscles that cross those joints do things, but also the connective tissue. Because if I am here, and I think about just bouncing up and down. I can do that with sort of this connective tissue springiness like this. I'm not really doing a whole lot muscle-wise when I bounce up and down like this. If I do it with muscle action, that looks like this. And that's basically the difference between landing on your heel and having to kind of jump forward again for your next step, or landing on the ball of the foot and boom, springing right into the next step. So we're gonna talk about how to make that happen that forefoot strike, some ways to kind of get your body to start to learn that if it's something that you're not super familiar with. So we talked about posture in the last video, quick review. Feet underneath your hips, heel, pinky toe, big toe are all grabbing the ground. I'm doing that, you might not be able to see it inside <laughs> my shoes. My hips are an extension, so my butt is on a little bit, my belly is tight, I'm not in a hollow position or flex, I'm not in an arch position or extended, I'm neutral. My shoulders are back, my upper back is extended, my chin is tucked. Arms are at my sides, nice and tight. So once I have that, if I can maintain all that good posture and be springy, then that's the start of learning that forefoot contact. So I'll just show you from the side. What it's gonna look like in slow motion is the ball of my foot is gonna land first, then my heel is gonna touch, then I'm gonna come back up. So I'm not staying up with my heels off the ground. That is what it looks like when somebody is doing a max effort sprint. But when we're running, jogging kind of you know, middle distance, it's gonna look like this. So my posture up here is solid. I'm working a little bit with my glutes to keep my hips in extension. My calves should be relatively relaxed. They're gonna work here a little bit to bounce me up and down, but mostly I wanna rely on this elastic connective tissue springiness, all right? So that drill again, this is really, really basic. Get into your good position that we talked about and then just bounce up and down. And you want to be like a pogo stick. A pogo stick is rigid up top where you're standing on it, right? And it's springy at the bottom. So that's your body. We create rigidity or stiffness um, through all of that postural muscle action that we talked about. And then that allows my legs to be springy, especially my lower legs, and bounce up and down. So once we have that, then let's take it to one foot. All right, so one foot on the ground, my running position is right here. Ooh, this is my landing position. So my ankle bone, my malleolus right here, there's two of them, there's one on the inside, one on the outside. 
that inside one is going to be just below the knee of the opposite leg. All right? And this is my position here. All of my stuff in my stance leg is the same as it was in two feet. So my two foot posture was like this. My one foot posture is going to be like this. And I don't want my pelvis to tilt. I don't want to kick my hip way out to the side. I don't want to be way up leaning over this way either. I want to be able to maintain that balance. I'm going to have to shift my weight a little bit, of course, because I'm on one. But this is level. That knee is bent to about 90 degrees, and this ankle is just totally relaxed. That's something that when I was coaching in gyms, we would partner people up when we were doing running days and have them just hold this and just make sure that that ankle is relaxed because you don't want excess tension. We want enough tension to maintain this rigidity and stiffness. We don't want so much tension that we're clenched down all the time. And then my hamstring is really the muscle that's pulling that foot up into that uh, kind of swing position. So if my hamstring works, then my heel comes straight towards my butt. Boom, just like that. What I don't want is to step out in front like I'm the drum major of the marching band, which I was, by the way. I don't want to come back behind um, like I'm trying to kick somebody behind me. I want to be right in the middle. So that's my single leg stance. So if I can do that, then I can work on, again, that rigid bouncing with just one leg at a time. So again, I get into that position we just talked about, and then I just want to work on, can I bounce in that position? Can I stay relatively extended, stiff, good posture up here while being bouncy on one leg. And what you'll find is if you're not used to running like this, or if you're like me and you're just out of shape because you didn't run much this winter, that gets tiring pretty fast. So we want to build up your tolerance to that. I don't want you to just go out and try to run like this all of a sudden, go out and run 10 miles. So what we use is the jump rope. Jump rope is awesome for this in terms of training this good posture with the bounciness and good foot contact that we're looking for. So, I'm gonna start with two feet. And again, they're under my hips, maybe even a little closer together if you want. Arms are at my sides. This is a lot of the aspects of my posture. All I'm doing is moving my arms out like that into the jump rope position. And then I'm just gonna try to maintain that solid body posture that we talked about from toe up. And then I wanna bounce and I'm bouncing, I should feel my heels contact the ground every single time. So a little bit at the beginning, I was kind of like this. My calves just tightened up on me because they're not used to doing this this season yet. But as I'm practicing, I want to work on just, you know, being stiff from here on up and then letting my legs be these nice bouncy springs. So once you can do that, and that's not too much of a beat down for your calves, I would say you want to be able to do at least 250 jumps like that in a row without having a break. If you can't do that, yeah, that's okay. Just build up to it. Then we want to go one foot at a time. So now I'm going to be in my running position just like this, and I'm going to bounce on one foot. So same thing. I'm working on my posture. I'm working on being elastic my lower leg, not doing like a big muscle action jump like this. Just nice and springy. And then I can switch as often as I need to. And again, you want to build up your tolerance. If you can get to where you are able to do 100 jumps on one leg in a row, that sounds like a lot and it is a lot. But if you can build that kind of resilience, that's going to really help you be able to tolerate the, the rigors of running on hard surfaces that we have to do if we live in the city. Um, without getting too beat up. So that's what we're thinking about with foot contact. It's applying that posture that we have in the standing position that we built up in the last video. So take that posture and then just make it dynamic. So I'm just adding this little bit of springiness to it, whether it's on one leg or whether it's on two, and just making sure I'm checking in constantly while I'm doing this. And even, you know, me, supposed expert here, struggles with this all the time, especially when I'm getting back into running after a winter and not doing a whole lot of it, I'll find I'm bouncing, my hips go into kind of this anterior pelvic tilt, hip flexion, I need to whoop, get the butt going. I'll find that I'm just floppy in the middle, I gotta tighten my abs. I'll find that my head's out here, I need to tuck my chin. So it's working on all those aspects of posture, but now it's dynamic, and we're also building up the tolerance of the lower legs, the muscles and connective tissue and the joints to be able to kind of take that repetitive 
uh, elastic pound. So that's what we're thinking about with foot contact. Try the position, try hopping on two, try hopping on one, try jumping rope. And then we're gonna take that. Once you have that, all you have to do is lean forward and that's gonna be the next video. See you next time.